they came back to Robert Brown and they filmed a sequence in which they were going to do the research, which I've lectured on at this meeting and at many other countries around the world, of looking through the microscope and seeing what Brown saw. And this is what the BBC had the cheek to make of our revered <laughs> hero, Robert Brown. Decided to peer into the heart of the plant cell, and there he'd reveal something as important as the discovery of the cell itself. Now, the orchid was a lucky choice as it happened, because it has cells which are larger than other plants. If it weren't for this, it's unlikely that Brown would have discovered what he did. Now, I'm going to try and see what was so important using Brown's own microscope. Brown noticed a distinctive shape within each cell. It was a turning point in science. He called it the nucleus. Now again, we have a complete fiction. The cells, and I saw some <coughs> skeptical responses here when it was said, the cells of an orchid are not smaller than the cells of other plants, are uh, not much larger than the cells of other plants. The seeds of orchids are the smallest seeds of any of the angiosperms. They are much smaller, for example, than mycopodium spores are. Mm -hmm. um, and the cells of many orchids are extremely tiny. <coughs> However, be that as it may, they are now going to recreate the experiment that I carried out in the 1980s and, and widely published. And you shall now see what the BBC's six-figure budget got them. I, I was astonished. I thought, well, it's so easy to do. At least I didn't find it very difficult. But this is what they managed to achieve. Here comes their technical wizardry, their top cameraman, their leading microscopical expert, <clears throat> and this, ladies and gentlemen, is what goes on the television program as an example of what Robert Brown could see through his microscope. <laughs> you know, Brian, I got a better image of that last year. <laughs> Do you know I believe you did? Yes, I um, did. Now, uh, now, I mean, here is a still frame. It's better on the small screen. But here is a still frame uh, of what they saw. Now, the image to which the esteemed Mr. Haddix is alluding is this one, uh, which is the same specimen that I imaged through the same lens on the same microscope, uh, and which I uh, was honored to win a prize for um, last year. If you put the two together, uh, here you can see my, my own uh, amateurish, ill-informed, and uh, quickly run-off experiment alongside the BBC's magnificent technical achievement. <laughs> <laughs> and the point is, of course, that people are left with the belief. I mean, the viewing dozens, for it did go out on a minority channel, were left with the belief that these early microscopes couldn't see stuff. Um, when it was reviewed by Adrian Gill, A.A. A. Gill, in the Sunday Times in London, the premier um, reviewer of television programs, uh, he said rather naughtily, so we're off with this young, cheeky, chappy science bloke in a red shirt and a cheap suit. <laughs> with his enthusiasm phaser on stun. <laughs> and then he says, it couldn't escape from the central problem that the story of the cell is also the story of microscopes, and wait for it, and that looking down microscopes is not great telling. He goes on, the story of cells actually is interesting, it's simply not very exciting. And no amount of wishful thinking is going to make it so. Now, of course, A.A. Gill doesn't know whether it makes exciting television because he's never seen it made into exciting television. <laughs> and nor have the television producers. The television producers don't know what they want. They only want what they already know.